remember that when I was a little boy, my father would tell me how when he was a little boy, he tasted chocolate for the first time in his life. As the liberating American troops entered Bohemia in 1945, he would climb on top of the jeeps, his pockets full of sugar cubes stolen from his mother's pantry, and exchange them for a few chocolate bars. During my childhood, uh, we were prohibited to speak about uh, that American soldiers liberated Pilsen. All of us, we knew that because we knew these pictures in uh, bookcases of uh, our grandmothers and grandfathers and we knew pictures of our mothers and fathers with American soldiers. This is the main reason the legend about American soldiers was born in Pilsen. During the communist regime, those who had witnessed the arrival of the Americans were secretly safeguarding every photograph, retelling every anecdote, and Czech music bands playing American bluegrass became very popular. Ladies and gentlemen, in the meantime, I'd like to ask if there are American veterans for a Second World War on board of our plane. They are going to visit our country this connection of the 60th anniversary of liberation of Western Bohemia. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd be like to thank you for everything you've done for us. May is not only the month of blooming lilacs when the cooing dove invites to love. It is not only the month when we erect maypoles, may bonfire and roast sausages. During the first days of May, the Czech people celebrate the end of the Second World War. Since the fall of the communist regime in 1989, Pilsen has been the stage of festivities commemorating the American liberation of Western Bohemia. Thank you. 60 years ago you were giving chocolates out, right? 60 years ago with chocolates and bullets. <laughs> How does it feel to be driving in a Jeep again? Well, I was just looking at some old pictures I had here. They had a Jeep well, somewhere in here. These were taken here 40, 60 years ago. Thought I had one. There, there's one right there. That's the original. <laughs> Is that you? No, that's my buddy. He's, a, he's in Milwaukee. Joe Merkway lives in Milwaukee. We were both 19, not shaved yet. <laughs> Boy, it was, we were too young to know the difference. <laughs> Thank you. On June 27, 1940, the American Quartermaster Corps Ordnance Technical Committee released specifications for a new military vehicle. Four-wheel drive, minimum speed 3 miles per hour, empty weight 1300 pounds, payload 600 pounds, wheelbase 80 inches, height 36 inches, track 47 inches, ground clearance 6.5 inches. In 1995, on the 50th anniversary, I met Charles Schaefer, who was the first American soldier to enter the Wehrmacht headquarters in Pilsen. So, in the morning hours of May 6, 2005, exactly 60 years later, we reenacted his ride through the streets of Pilsen to the Commandant Tour. How does it feel to be in a Jeep like this again? It feels the same. It's interesting. This is the same position I was in when I met the Czech uh, men on the street who told me to push. We're down the street. Schaefer's 16th Armored Division was part of General Patton's 3rd Army in charge of the invasion and liberation of Western Czechoslovakia. On May 4th, Patton gives an order to his troops. I want you to attack Pilsen in the morning. The following day, as the American troops launch a massive attack, an uprising begins in Pilsen 
in response to the Prague radio broadcast calling for general resistance to the German occupation. Not long before 2nd Lieutenant Schaefer enters the building, at 10 a.m., a sudden sniper fire erupts throughout the city. It was the planned hour of the German attempt to put down the Pilsen uprising. Came up to a room full of people, and uh, I told them, "Put your pistols in the floor on the corner." All the Waffen in in the in, in the <laughs> and anyway, but my poor German. And then, uh, <coughs> then I told them to sit on the around the corners of the room. There were chairs. There were a lot of chairs, and the uh, Ruig blabbing. That's when I realized, hey, I'm here all alone. I gotta go get somebody to help. And then I yelled down the stairway, and eventually a soldier came up, and I told him to get me an officer. The general not gonna surrender to a second lieutenant. So he came back with uh, Lieutenant Colonel Perkins. And then Perkins wrote out on a slip for unconditional surrender. He had let the general sit at his desk. And then, when, then a general opened the desk drawer, pulled out his pistol and killed himself right there. And his, his wife and all his officers were in the same room, right up here. And uh, his wife had a lot of blood on her, you know. And she went and uh, in the back room to wash up. And that's when I followed her and got the uniform out of the closet. She was there when I took the uniform. Yep, that's the story. Second Lieutenant Charles Schaefer from the 216th Armored Engineers, commanded by Colonel Smith. But I wasn't supposed to be here. I was supposed to be in the other direction toward Germany. And, and that's the reason I never got any uh, acknowledgement of what happened here. Towards the end of the war, the Allies decided to draw a line across Europe. Part of this demarcation line cut right through the western part of Czechoslovakia, on an axis, Karlo Vivari, Plzeň, České Budějovice. Sometimes the boundary was defined by a rope strung across a roadway, sometimes by two posts and wooden sheds a few feet apart, one for an American and the other for a Russian soldier. I had to go to the, from Skocici to Pilsen to pick up my men's laundry. I was a staff sergeant, supply sergeant, and we went to Pilsen. And they told me that the laundry is not ready. You have to come back in an hour. <coughs> so I told my driver in the Jeep, I said, Pat Carrigan, I said, let's go to Prague. We drove up and first a, a, a female Russian soldier stopped us. Pass. I showed her my laundry ticket. <laughs> she looked at it upside down. I got her cigarettes, pass! <laughs> we got to Masaryk Square, and we stopped there. And we sat in the Jeep, and people came up to us, thanking us, thanking us for liberating them, but why didn't you come before the Russians? I couldn't answer that. The laundry wasn't ready. <laughs> However, Winning the war sometimes required crossing the demarcation line. No, my mother, like Mira, the Czechine, Scotske původy, tak měla nějakou zásobu dobré skotské whisky, a ona sama to nepila, takže se to zachovalo ve sklepě na zámku. Čimelicích, my jsme viděli, že pochodovali s něm nám, nebo byli to rychle odjeli osez. SS, který střílili kohokoliv, kdo měl vystočenou československou vlajku. Tak ovšem nastal hodný strach v Čeměnici a tak dále. A když americký velitel v písku váhal překročit 
tedy tu americkou sovětskou úmluvou, až kam měli jít američané, až kam Rusové, tak... Mluvíte o té demarkační části? Ano, ano, ano. A buď snahu na zachá- zachránit nebo po ukázku na tuto zásobu se potom odhodlal a vyrazil s jedním tankem a dvěma obrděnými vozy a zachránit Čimilice, bo opravdu je jenom na hranici Čimilitky k Krsicům, tam se zastavili, zablokovali silnici a tím tedy zastavili Němce. Takže vlastně díky také té skotské misky. Ano, prosím. Bo té doby si taky velice vážím vždy. <laughs> Military Car Club of Pilsen, now the 3rd Army Club of Pilsen, has been reenacting the American Liberation since 1990. <laughs> Dříve jako za totáče se scháněli tak, že se koupil nějaký první vrák a z toho se vydali díly. Every May, with great attention to detail and authenticity, the reenactors relive the last moments of the Second World War. It was the members of the club who, along with the sculptor Jaroslav Boker, initiated the idea of a permanent memorial to General Patton. I don't know if you know of the new controversy in the new Patton statue. Well, this man, he says, I want to, I want to honor General Patton. He says, I'm going to build a General Patton statue. And so, he brought that to the city, and the city said, okay, we'll help you finance that. In the meantime, someone dug around and said, we can't have him build this. He was a uh, communist sympathizer, secret police. And so uh, a little town out, just outside of Pilsen says, hey, we'll be happy to have this statue in our town. That'll be our town centerpiece, of course. It will stand. It is built, it will stand. It'll be dedicated tomorrow. The village of Dishina lies on the demarcation line. It was home to one of the 3rd Army Operation Centers. <music> to honor the memory of General Patton, the mayor, Václava Kuklíková, and a municipality decided to rename the local school after him and erect a statue in front of the school. I remember that, when I was a boy, in my history class, the teacher would tell us that the Russians had liberated our country. I raised my hand and asked, Ale soudružko, učitelko, nebyli to Američani, kdo osvobodili Plzeň?